Hey there, it's Chris from Good Roads, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to press a deck using a vacuum bag and a foam half mold. This right here is the mold I'm going to be using. I pressed it in the last video, so if you're interested in that process, you can go pause this video, go check it out. We're not going anywhere, you can come right back. The method that I'm going to be showing off in this video was developed by the company Roar Rocket, so if you're interested in tackling this kind of build, you can get all the materials and tools that you need from them. Just to be completely straightforward, I purchased all the materials for this build myself. They're just a really good resource for small builders. So. What is a vac bag and how does it work? A vacuum bag is a durable plastic bag that can be sealed up airtight, in this case using sealing tape. It has a one-way valve that, along with a hand pump, can be used to suck all of the air out of the bag, pulling a vacuum. And here's the cool part, when you pull a vacuum in a sealed container, the entire weight of the column of air in the atmosphere above it is pushing down on that container without anything pushing back. It exerts one atmosphere of pressure. And that can be a pretty significant clamping force. Since the bag we're using is flexible, it effectively gives us a one atmosphere clamp in whatever shape we want. Pretty crazy, right? All that from a plastic bag and a hand pump. So let's use the atmosphere to press a deck. The first thing we're gonna need to do is get everything arranged for our layup. The layup is the step in the board building process where all the different components of a board, the different veneers in this case, are coated in glue and laid on top of one another before being put into the press. So we're gonna need our mold, we're gonna need some glue and a glue application method. I'm using Type Bond 3 and a paint roller. And our veneers. As I mentioned in the video on making the mold, I'm actually gonna be pressing a mountain board deck, so I've got a nine veneer layup instead of the standard seven for a skateboard. I've got six rock maple veneers, four long grain and two cross grain, and I'm also using some specialty materials to try to get certain qualities from my board. I've got two additional long grain veneers made from bamboo, which I hope will give the deck a nice springy pop, and I've also got this. This is a sheet of what's called either wood backed or two ply veneer. It's actually two sheets of veneer bonded together with the grain running perpendicular to each other. This one is cherry, so on top of being beautiful, that additional cross crane should add some dimensional stability to the deck. Off to one side, I've also got my bag prepped and waiting, and with that everything's in place, so let's start spreading some glue. The goal of a layup is to get a significant amount of glue between all the layers of the board. I'm still fairly new to the paint roller method, and after my last failed attempt, I'm going to be rolling glue on both sides of the interior veneers. That was a tip I got from you guys, and it ends up working out really well, so thanks for the advice. Personally, for me, the jury is still out on the roller method versus using a squeegee. I think a roller is a little bit easier, but it's also slower, and it seems like it just devours glue. What do you think? What's your preferred method of glue application? Once my last sheet of wood was in place, I tipped up these little pieces of painter's tape to keep everything aligned and moved my layup over to the bag. I keep my bag propped open with just a spare piece of foam. It makes it much easier to slide the mold in place, and then I can just pull that piece of foam right out. And once the mold is situated, you lay this bit of plastic mesh on top. It helps the air flow from the edges of the bag into the pump, and it gets you a more even press. After that, you seal the bag shut. I'm using a small brayer to push down on that sealing tape and to make sure everything is closed up tight. Then you get pumping. One thing to try to be careful about is you don't want the bag to pull in underneath your veneers and get caught between your deck and the mold. And that's that, the board is officially in the press. I like to check after a half hour or so to make sure the bag isn't leaking. If it seems like there's some air getting in, I just double check my seals, make sure they're tight, and pull the vacuum again. The glue takes at least 24 hours to set, but I actually gave mine two days, after which I came back and cracked open the bag. One quick step before removing the blank from the mold, I'm going to transfer my center line so all the geometry is in the proper place when I go to shape the board. So, how did we do? Yeah, dude. Sick. Ooh, man, that concave is cool. That's right, the blank looks good. I've got all the shapes from my mold in my deck. Now it's time to shape it. Thank you. 
I'm gonna quickly give myself a center line and a midline, then make a template for my deck shape and trace it into place. I've been thinking about this deck for a very long time, so I've already got the exact shape I want in mind. I rough cut the blank on the bandsaw. And refine the profile using the belt sander. Next up, I rounded the rails, using a router to get things started, and finishing everything with a palm sander. This deck is just a prototype, I'm not even sure if I'm going to like some of the geometry, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time going crazy with the art. I'm just going to hit that cherry base with a stain to make sure the beauty of the wood pops a little more. And once that's dry, I'm going to add some color using alcohol ink and markers. And lastly, I'm gonna add the Good Roads logo using my 3D printed stamp. The next step is drilling mounting holes. I've got a free printable paper template for this over on goodroadscollective.com, or you can pick up one of my scarab bolt hole guides. The scarab is a tool I developed that makes it really easy to get precise perpendicular bolt holes in either the new school or old school pattern. Luckily for this build, skate style mount board trucks use the old school mounting pattern, so by using the scarab, drilling the bolt holes is a breeze. I do not, however, have a template for binding mounting holes, so I just used another mountain board deck as a reference. Hit all of that with a couple coats of poly, and I'm done. My deck is ready for setup. A quick test run out front. and then it's over to the trails. Nah, it's just too wet. Sorry guys. The ground's pretty soggy where I'm at, so it was kind of tough to get any speed, but I am surprised at how much I like this board. I'm pretty sure I actually like the asymmetrical concave. I want a little bit more time on it to be sure, but at the very least, it's super interesting. And I'm also surprised at how turny the deck feels. When I took the blank out of the mold, it actually relaxed quite a bit, so the angles on the nose and tail are shallower than I intended. And I also made the wheelbase a little bit longer than the deck I'm replacing. It wasn't intentional, but it just kind of worked out that way. And both of those aspects, the shallower nose and tail angle and the longer wheelbase, should have made for a board that doesn't turn as readily. But there's something about the way this deck sits on the trucks that makes it really easy to lean into carves. The flex is also great. That bamboo is doing exactly what I hoped it would do. It's a little bit heavier than my older deck, so maybe next time around I'll swap some of the maple out for some birch, and I'll shorten up that wheelbase, which will let me take some material off the nose and tail, which should make for a lighter deck. But honestly, for my first ever mountain board deck build, I'm pretty dang proud of how this came out. <laughs>
This deck had a mountain board style nose and tail, in between it, it had a rocker camber rocker profile, and in the rocker sections of the deck, it had an asymmetrical concave. That's a really complex board geometry. But using the vac bag method, it was really easy to get all those curves pressed into place and achieve the deck that I wanted to achieve. So if you're interested in the method, check out Roar Rocket. This is their technique. This isn't a sponsored video or anything, but they are the source for the bags, the pumps, and all the other materials you'd need to tackle a build like this. Quick note, something I learned recently that I thought was pretty interesting. I've actually been talking to Ted at Roar Rocket and their patent, and the process is patented, is actually for the process itself, not just for the bags and pumps and the kits. It's the whole method. The whole system of using a soft bag, a one-sided foam mold, and a hand pump was something he developed way back. He shared the technique with the community years ago, and he's been making it available to us ever since. Plainly put, Roar Rocket has been a cornerstone of the board building hobby for more than 10 years, and they've probably done more as an organization to get people into the craft of building decks than anything else I can think of. What that means here on the channel is I am not going to be doing a video on how to make a Roar Rocket style vac bag. Not only would that violate their patent and probably infringe on their intellectual property, it might also affect Ted's business. Nobody gets into the skate industry to get rich, and we want companies like Roar Rocket around for as long as possible. There are lots of easy ways to build a skateboard deck, and the one that I showed off in this video is theirs. So let's give credit where credit is due, and be supportive of a company that supported the hobby for as long as they have. So cool! All that said, a vac bag is essentially a prefab press, and it's probably the easiest way to get started pressing decks out of veneers. I'm super happy with my new mountain board deck, and coming up on the channel I've got the conclusion of two long-running urethane projects. So first off, shout out to my patrons and their continued support for enabling projects like that, enabling me to get the materials. And second off, once those videos have gone out, I'm going to be mostly in winter mode for a while. Beyond wrapping up the snowboard build, which is no small feat, I don't have a whole lot of ideas for winter projects, so I'm putting it to you guys. What would you want to see me build? What kind of cold weather fun could we get up to this winter? And if your answer is more snowboard builds, hey, me too. Them's expensive projects though, so maybe consider checking out the Patreon and throwing in a couple bucks for materials. Just saying. Just saying. No matter what you guys come up with, I love having you along for the journey, so thanks so much for coming by, and until next time, I'll see you soon. Oh, guys, it's so cold in the studio today. I gotta get those walls built and that insulation put in. And no matter what you guys come up with, I love having you along for the journey, so thanks so much for coming by. Coming to by, I did it again. Coming to by. It's getting cold and I'm getting mumbly because of how cold it is. Come in the bay.